Imagine losing 320,000 US dollars to hackers every second. That's 18 million dollars a minute, 800 billion dollars every month, and 10.5 trillion US dollars every year. 10 trillion. That will be the damage cost of global cybercrime in 2025, with the games industry squarely in the crosshairs. And working in gaming myself, I was truly wondering why these big techie game companies that are no strangers to cyber attacks still can't probably shield themselves. And a hacker leaked early development footage from the highly anticipated and unreleased. I've been greeted instead by error messages. In the past month, Sony's PlayStation video game network linked to a message board and stole customer information. Some news from EA here. Hackers have broken into EA and stolen uh, game source code and related internal tools. Cybercrime has become an epidemic. If measured as a country, then cybercrime would be the world's third largest economy after the US and China. That's four times more than our military global spending. And the games industry, well, it's under siege. Because ever since the pandemic hit, gaming's traffic spiked with game downloads of over 300 terabytes per second. And that's like watching 50,000 high definition movies simultaneously every single second. That's a lot of data traffic. And looking at this beautiful map here, the countries with the highest rate of cybercrime are Russia, followed by Brazil, then the US, China, and Germany. It's a worldwide issue, no kidding. And the latest hacker news in the games industry, they read like a wake-up call. Ubisoft targeted by hackers. Again, hackers breach electronic arts. Insomnia games targeted in hack. Hackers took over dev accounts on Steam. Sony at the verge of Major League. Noticing a pattern with Sony, uh, they get hacked a lot. Activision suffers data breach, Call of Duty plan stolen, but wait, it gets better. Hacking Gang claims to have stolen 200 gigabytes of Epic Games data, only to later claim that the entire thing was, was just smoke and mirrors. It was a scam. We don't think of ourselves as hackers, but rather as criminal geniuses, if you can call us that. If that's genius, what does that make me? I don't know. But what I do know is that while the last one might have been a scam, the objective across the board is the same. Money, baby. Money. Most folks think hackers attack game companies just to leak the latest game just for kicks. But no, it's truly just about the cash. And with $180 billion in revenue, gaming is booming, which is indeed catnip for cyber criminals. You know how much revenue game companies made just from total game sales since launch? Minecraft, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Roblox, GTA 5. GTA 5 Online, $800 million a year just from in-app purchases. You see, game companies aren't just game companies anymore. They are major financial targets with huge amounts of customer data and financial transactions. Just look where the microtransaction market is heading. $100 billion by 2026. And the shift to subscription models means even more personal data up for grabs. Ever heard of the hacker gang Reseda? I haven't, but check this out. A ransomware group called Reseda is now taking credit for the major ongoing network outage at Lurie Children's Hospital. And a post on the dark web appears to be asking for millions in exchange for stolen information. And that's the same hacker gang behind the Insomniac Games leak from last year. When they hacked the studio, they demanded 50 bitcoins, which is around about $2 million, for over 1.3 million files, including unreleased Wolverine game footage. If you spent the summer with a crazy Russian and a hairy sadist, it took me forever to pull this mix together. Their motivation? We knew that devs making games like this would be an easy target. Our motivation is money. They are so famous that even the US Department of Justice had to step in asking everyone to please enable multi-factor authentication. And that becomes even more important as we're all moving to cloud and mobile. And that's a double-edged sword, because the cloud's centralized, advanced security makes hacking tougher, but not impossible. And once hackers get in, they hit a jackpot, because they can actually access multiple data of multiple companies at once, in one spot. And also, with more of us working from home, there's even more stuff going through cloud apps. When hackers leak GTA 6 footage, Rockstar Games asked their workers to come back to the office five days a week, all for security reasons. And I get that. Because next year, we're gonna have a whopping 200 zettabytes of data stored everywhere across devices, from IT to cloud infrastructures to smartphones. 200 zettabytes of data. Do you even know how much that is? I didn't, but I googled, so you don't have to. 200 zettabytes of data. It's like stacking smartphones from Earth to the sun and back 
over 100 times. That's a goldmine for hackers, especially now that we have 5 billion people online. And guess how many of those are gamers? You're right, more than half. So more cloud, more devices, more gamers means what? Much larger attack surface for hackers. But how do they attack? There are many, 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 many tactics or so-called attack vectors, but I can give you the top three. DDoS attacks, that's when hackers overwhelm servers with requests so much so they slow down the service or shut it down altogether. The games industry is plagued by relentless DDoS attacks targeting companies big and small. Riot Games, perfect example. They have a whole catalog of DDoS attacks over the years, mostly bringing down their League of Legends servers. Besides the cyber attack in 2023, when the game's source code was stolen, the latest one happened just a few days ago. The LCK faced a cyber attack where servers suffered persistent DDoS attacks, causing the matches to be delayed and eventually rescheduled. The network delays were so many, players sneaked in some sleep as the event stretched to a record seven hours. And they are celebrating because they just played the longest series in LOL Park history to date. And then there's ransomware. Ransomware is everywhere. Ransomware attacks are up 20% from last year, according to Checkpoint Software, as companies contend with more sophisticated threat actors using AI in nefarious ways. With ransomware as a service, yep, that exists. Attackers use phishing emails and compromised credentials to find vulnerabilities. Once inside, they deploy ransomware to encrypt the data, demanding a ransom for decryption keys. The idea that people can buy ransomware software just the same way they can buy any other software is somewhat fascinating. CDPR experienced a huge ransomware attack when hackers obtained the source code for Cyberpunk, The Witcher 3, and Gwent with a 48-hour ultimatum. Bandai Namco also suffered a ransomware attack in 2022 by the Black Cat Group, obtaining corporate and customer information. And only after the attack did Bandai promise to strengthen their security system. Black Cat is an interesting one. They are a ransomware gang that have their own ransomware as a service affiliate program, their own ransomware executable, and a searchable database of stolen data. There's nothing that does not exist, right? No surprise that the FBI Cyber Division published a flash warning stating that Black Cat breached at least 60 entities worldwide. I also read somewhere that in 2031, ransomware attacks will strike every two seconds and cost us $265 billion every year. All I will say is hashtag no investment advice. But one of the most effective tactics are social engineering attacks. That's why hackers don't need your password to hack. All they need to do is convince an underinformed, stressed, fatigued, confused person to do what they say. In the form of phishing or impersonation, they do trick you into revealing sensitive information. Just check this out. Then 18-year-old Arian Kortai, member of the Lapsus Group, and going by the handle Teapot Uber Hacker, hacked Uber and Nvidia before hacking Rockstar Games. With Uber, he fooled an employee by flooding him with push authentications for over an hour, then messaged him over WhatsApp as Uber IT. The employee accepted, and Arion could add his device. He got bailed, but that didn't stop Mr. Teapot Uber Hacker from hacking. Apparently, all you need is an Amazon Fire Stick, a phone, and a hotel TV. So while under police protection in a hotel, he gained access to Rockstar's Slack channel and obtained 90 clips of unreleased GTA 6 footage and the GTA 5 source code, which was shared as proof that he had stolen the data. And the GTA 6 footage? Well, he did say on Slack that he's not a Rockstar employee, that he is an attacker, and that if they don't contact him within 24 hours, he will release the source code, which he did. In fact, 98%. 98% of cyber attacks are social engineering attacks, and the consequences are devastating, not good. From losing user trust, financial losses to reputational damage, it's crazy. In Insomniac's case, the leak spilled Wolverine footage, a 12-year release roadmap, their budget for Spider-Man 3, financial details, Slack conversations, employee passport scans, and more impacting over 400 employees. Insomniac tweeted about the emotional toll it's taken on the dev team, but they garnered lots of support from fans and game studios alike. And when CD Projekt Red got hacked, 
their stock value dropped. While the stock dropped by 8% post game launch, it did drop again after the attack. And as CDPR refused to pay the ransom, Hello Kitty, the hacker gang, auctioned it off on the dark web for $7 million when an offer was received outside the forum that satisfied us. And in Rockstar's case, while the GTA 6 leak cost about $5 million in damages, and the parent company Take Two also saw their stock slightly dip by 2.3%. It is unfortunate when you think of the years of production that really goes into a game like this. And of course, you have the gaming market conditions most recently described by NVIDIA as challenging Shauna. So a double-edged sword here today for them. So what might be a good buying opportunity for some is a nightmare for others. Employees could face doxing. Costly marketing strategies have to be adjusted. Competitors gain an edge. And with every game leak, the trust across partners, companies and gamers is just shattered. By the way, gamers. Every year, over 4 million hack attempts target gamer accounts alone. Minecraft tops the list, accounting for 70% of alerts. So again, with so many huge scale attacks, why can techie game companies still not properly fend these off? Well, surprise, surprise, reason number one, regulations, to be precise the lack of regulations. The games industry is one of the world's largest unregulated financial markets. Banks and hospitals have super strict cybersecurity protocols, but for gaming, the rules are much looser, which means some are playing very loose with cybersecurity. With all the microtransactions, things should actually be as strictly secured as banks, but they aren't. So the less they are regulated, the less they spend on cybersecurity. The only few regulations they abide to are the GDPR and California's CACPA, both imposing huge fines, but that's not enough to wake everyone up. Reason number two, scale and innovation. There's this misconception that there's an end to cybersecurity, but there never is. The larger the company, the more complex the systems and the more vulnerabilities there are. Also, game companies love to adopt new technologies faster than any other sector, which means the proper security protocols are never really yet in place. It's always a race between new tech and missing protocols. But the biggest issue, reason number three, is us. You know, even with fancy tech, it's the staff, it's the contractors, it's the partners, it's, it's the gamers that are the weakest link in the cybersecurity chain. That's why social engineering attacks are so effective. There's a reason that cybersecurity company NoB4 is worth 4.6 billion US dollars. Also, there's a general lack of cybersecurity awareness. I myself am very guilty. I don't renew my passwords as often as I should. I skip two-factor and multi-factor authentication just because I'm lazy. And without MFA, it's a child's play for these pros. It's like stealing candy from a baby. Just that in this case, the baby is a multi-billion dollar industry. So what can we do about it? Well, for once, I myself shouldn't be so lazy and set up multi-factor authentication wherever possible, renew my passwords, keep software updated, and make sure others do the same. On a company level, well, they need to step up their game and start thinking about security maybe right from the start when a game is being developed, not post-hacker attack. There should be mandatory awareness training for employees and gamers alike. In our remote work world, some companies do realize that and adopted a so-called zero-trust approach, which means trust no one, verify everyone, whether at home or in the office. I know it can be very annoying to always having to verify yourself, but in the world of cybersecurity, the greatest threat isn't code or a system bug, it's something much harder to remediate, and that's the human element.